All right, welcome back to the Serious Angler Podcast. Today we have a pretty cool episode. We're getting on Jake Suvac, a Florida kayak angler, on here to talk about fishing in Florida, kayak fishing. Uh, he's also a co-angler on the BFLs down there. Uh, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different stuff, you know, fishing Florida, fishing the kayak, his roots into fishing. It's going to be a blast. We're going to get Jake on here. But before we get into today's show, I want to quick, quickly announce two things to you guys. One, a reminder on the episode number 100, we will be announcing the giveaway that we are running over on our Instagram page. So go to Instagram at Sears Angler. You can enter to win three different prize packs from Angler, um, from Douglas Outdoors, and from Queen Tackle. Different, three different prize packs, three different winners. Um, the rules are very simple, very easy to enter. So head over to our Instagram page to enter to win one of those three different prize packs. Um, definitely don't want to miss out. I will drop the link down below to head over there. Um, and the, la- the next announcement is if you guys follow along with Angler, um, the Angler of the Bullseye, um, their, their media page, um, we are running a challenge. Uh, Angler has been posting many different challenges where people can go out to record a certain amount of catches to be entered to win um, a certain prize. And now there's a Sears Angler podcast challenge where you guys can go out, catch 30 fish in the span of, I believe it's two weeks, two or three weeks, to go out and catch 30 fish with a chance to become one of the guests on my show to get here and come on to talk to me for an hour so I can interrogate you about your life. No, I'm just kidding. But I would love the opportunity to talk to one of you guys who, who decided it was it would be fun to embark on the challenge, the Sears Angler, Angler Challenge. I would love to talk to you guys about it, see how it went, talk about the experience, your roots into fishing. So if you have an Angler Bullseye or the Angler app, go and accept the Sears Angler Podcast Challenge be entered to come on the show. I'd love to uh, to hear who's coming on. I'd love to get you guys on the show to talk, just talk fish and have a great time. Um, so that being said, without further ado, Mr. Jake Suvac, let's get him on the show. All right, we are recording. Mr. Jake Suvac, what's going on, man? Not too much. How you doing? Doing all right. We're good. We're, we were supposed to do this last night, but fortunately we are some flexible schedules here, so we got you on today, and a little bit of power outages, you know, you know how it is. But uh, I'm glad we got you on, dude. I appreciate. Yeah, happy to be on. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, How, how's the weather in good old Florida? Uh, it's been nice for me lately, uh, all the way down south. Um, it's funny, like a lot of times these storms will go over like just north of me, and I'll hear the thunder and see the lightning going off, but we don't actually get hit by it. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. So you, you're out in the water. Like, you, are you not afraid of going out and fish with thunderstorms or what? Oh, man. I, I actually got caught in a pretty bad storm earlier this year. So if, if I see one rolling in, I'll uh, I'll get off the water. You, you're, you're booking it? You're getting out of there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> or I'll at least wait for it to pass by. I mean, down here, this, pretty much in the summer in Florida, it rains for 15, 30 minutes every day, sometime between noon and 4 o'clock. So you can get off the water and wait. 20 minutes for a storm to roll through, you can get right back out there. Yeah. It is, that was one thing I learned quick with Florida is uh, my family would go down because our grandparents live in, in Port Charlotte. We spoke about how I'm headed down there Friday. Yeah. But we, we started going down there probably seven or eight years ago, and we'd see, like, these storms coming in. We're like, oh, great. The rest of our day is ruined. And we quickly learned because we'd get in the car, leave, go back to the house, and then we get to the house and everything's fine. It's clear, like you wouldn't even know there was a storm. So right, like, yeah. Bluebird skies, a couple small clouds in the sky. It's like a beautiful day all over again. Yeah, right. And we were sitting there like, what, what, what just happened? And it happened the next day. And we're like, okay, we just need to go sit in the car or just ride it out. Forgive, like you said, 20, 30 minutes, and then it's fine. It's yeah. like nothing happened. But it's, oh, I, I miss Florida. I'm excited. I haven't been down there in a few years, so I'm pretty excited to head down there Friday to uh getting some fish oh yeah oh yeah do you, do you have a preference of salt versus fresh i like fresh water just um so i'm from ohio originally and uh, I, I grew up walleye fishing uh and got into bass fishing um once i got in my teens um but pretty much since i've been down here i haven't really run in i've, I've had the opportunities to go saltwater fishing and I've, I've gone a couple times on my kayak to try to figure it out on my own but just knowing that the bass fishing is so good down here, it's all right. I can either go for for my first double digit largemouth bass, or I can go try to learn how to saltwater fish. And going for that ten pounder is always a little bit more intriguing. 
<laughs> I hear that. We, we <laughs> have very similar minds, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> but dude, I've had I've had very I've had several people on from Florida on the podcast, and I don't think a single one was born in Florida. I think they're all from the north, and now they live in Florida. Oh really? What's up with that? Like between Ohio, Illinois, Pennsylvania, I've had like three people who've lived in Pennsylvania and now live in Florida. Yeah, it seems like I've, I've met a lot of people. Uh, same thing. A lot of people that are from anywhere else that have moved down here. Not too many people that are actually from Florida, but it's funny. You know when you meet somebody from Florida because I'm still a little bit afraid of the, of kayaking around the Gators and stuff like that. And then uh, you know like a. a Homegrown Florida boy is like he's gonna go up and like try to pet the thing or something like that, <laughs> <laughs> and they don't they don't care about him. They're, they're not scared of him. It seems like it's. I wish I could have that uh, that fearlessness. Yeah, sometimes that fear might help you out though. It might save you some fingers, yeah. an arm. So <laughs> I think you should just keep it because you know, I'm the same way. But uh, yeah. yeah, gators down there to them is like deer for us back up north. Yeah. So you see them all over the place. You don't think of any of it. But yeah, yeah exactly. it's, it's just nah, no thanks. I don't do gators. I don't do teeth. That's not yep. my thing. But uh, man, that's crazy. But I mean, yeah, between the gators, then you go and you have the sharks. I mean, you, pretty much you, you're facing death every time you go out fishing. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so I, I like to stick to you know just <laughs> one thing that might kill me <laughs> instead of uh, instead of two. Yeah. Right. Try to try to limit the amount of options to get eaten. <laughs> right. I hear that. Are you more afraid of gators or snakes? Gators. I mean, I actually, I've, I've been asked that before, and I haven't even seen a snake down here. Um, I saw, actually, I saw one, and it was crossing the crossing the dirt road that uh, I had to go go down to get to a lake. Um, that's the only snake I've seen here in the almost two years that I've lived here. Damn, well, that's good. That's great news. <laughs> it makes me feel a little better about coming down there. All right. But all right, dude. Before we get into the podcast, I mean, we're already five minutes in. But you know, before we get into the the rest of, of this here, you know, for everybody watching and listening, tell them a little bit about yourself. You know, how you got into fishing. What's that first story like, and who introduced it to you? Um. So, uh, like I said, I'm originally from Ohio. Uh, I grew up fishing Lake Erie. So, you know, my parents would put up my crib on the boat back of the boat. Um, so I, I've been on a boat for as long as I can remember. Um, and uh but i guess you know since i have gotten so much into so much more into bass fishing my my best memory has been uh just going out our, our parents uh, had a dinghy and we'd go camping every single year and i would just go cruise around in the bay i'd buy a spinner bait and that's the only thing that i knew would catch bass so i'd buy one of those go cruise around the bay and uh catch one or two each time i went out but it was just fun yeah um, so, I mean, that's kind of just how I got into bass fishing and, like, fishing in general. I was always out with my dad, always out with my grandpa. I've had, you know, hundreds of awesome memories with them uh, on a boat. Um, and going to, uh, there's a uh, South Bass Island on Lake Erie. Uh, there's Putin Bay. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a lot, once I turn 21, a lot of good memories out there, too. You know, you get a tough day of fishing. <laughs> You go in for a, a beer or a, a beer or two, which has been pretty cool. I hear um, that. Yeah, so um, from Ohio, that's how I got into fishing, how I got into bass fishing. Um, I started getting into kayak fishing. Uh, my cousin Jeff took me out one day, and he's, you know, we'd, we'd usually go out in the dinghy and be like, hey, how about we go out in kayaks today? I was like, all right, sure, never done that before. It sounds like fun. And man, I just like absolutely fell in love with it. And still, I can't afford a boat. So, I mean, being able to get on the water and really do some serious fishing out of a kayak has been awesome. Um, I, I started out with a, a small nine foot uh, vibe kayak and uh, that was probably five or six years ago now. And, you know, I'd go out once a month, just mess around, still didn't really know what I was doing with bass fishing. Uh, at that point I was playing uh, college hockey. So I uh, didn't really have too much time for other hobbies. And then, um, three years ago when I was done playing I just needed something I needed some competition and that's when I decided to get into my first tournament and got into my first tournament I, I didn't catch a fish it was only 14 people so it was, it was nice that it was a small tournament but it was only 14 people four people caught one fish that day it was a horrible oh day gosh. 
But uh, even though it was a slow day of fishing, man, like just having that adrenaline rushing the entire eight hours or whatever, being on the water, I was just, I was hooked immediately. It was it was an incredible experience, even though it was uh, a little bit slow fishing. Yeah, that atmosphere is just addicting in itself. Even beyond just the catching, I mean, yes. Yeah. It really reels you in, like, quite literally, is when you join that tournament and you have that first bite, and you're like, that adrenaline rush is just nuts. Yeah. But I hear you, but where, where'd you play college hockey at? Uh, Westfield State in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Division... That's D3. D3? Okay. Because yeah. they got rid of D2, right? Right. There's a there's a couple schools still that I think are technically D2, but they play a Division 3 schedule. Okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I played hockey my whole life, and I had planned on doing college hockey, but obviously injuries and stuff got in the way. So unfortunately, the doctor said, you know, no more contact sports. So yeah. I was I was the unfortunate soul that got stuck to swimming in college. <laughs> so, but I hear you, man. So so what made the decision? Like, what was what was your decision making? You know, so, influence to move to Florida. So actually. Uh, it was kind of just on a whim for grad school. So at, at, when I graduated um, my undergrad, I had uh, plan. I didn't have any plans on going to going to grad school. Long story short, I started applying for jobs for like a month or two, and didn't get a single call back. I'm like, uh, I think I just, I just got to go get a, go get a master's degree. So um, basically, uh, I found a couple schools that I applied for and got into a school in Florida, University of South Florida, and uh, Moved down to Tampa and um, got my master's degree, and then found a job down in Fort Lauderdale, and that's how I ended up down here. Um, and I'm I'm lucky. I live with uh, my fiance Kylie, who has been awesome through moving everywhere and uh, and also supporting my fishing habit, which has been great. <laughs> <laughs> it always helps when they're okay with it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, 100%. So uh, so yeah, uh, lived in Tampa for. Uh, almost a year and then moved down to Fort Lauderdale where I am a strength conditioning coach at Nova Southeastern University. Now. Oh, so you've, you probably had a, have been on a break for a while then. Yeah. Uh, it's been weird. So like it's, I've had to, I've been working from home. Um, so I'm still working, but as a strength coach, it's, you know, it's really hard working from home because you can't really coach yeah. all that much. Uh, it's been a lot of like stuff online, video stuff like that. Dang. It's, it really is kind of hard to instruct people. You could probably like write workouts, right? And that's probably yeah. as as far as it really goes. Yeah, it's been a lot of writing workouts and uh, like uh, at home workouts, which is it's it's been tough. But but also, you know, having it's been tough. But having a little bit of time off, I've been able to do a lot more fishing this past month or two, um, which has been pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can never complain with extra time to go fishing, right? So. Yeah, that's right. Is, is there a favorite time of the year for you to go fishing down in Florida? Is there like a, a time that you're just like you're more excited for than the rest? At the end of winter, into the spring, man. Um, really, actually, it's it's really been an awesome year, at least for me. I've, I've been doing well. Um, now that it's getting really hot, I'd say like up to this point is my favorite. Uh, December to June. Like we had a tournament on Saturday and it – God, it was 95 with no wind all day, and we were out on the water for I think it was nine or ten hours. It was, it was brutal. That that sounds brutal. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like it hurts more than it was enjoyable. <laughs> I don't mind the heat that much, actually. As long as I've got water with me and I'm staying hydrated, I, I can still feel pretty good throughout the day. But um, but by the end of by the end of Saturday, I was hurting quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding, man. Yeah, I, I like to do like my different. My, I do some. I'm known for doing some 12 to 14 hour days in the kayak. Yeah, up here in New York, but it's a little different to do a 12 hour day when it's you know mid 50, 60 degrees. You have water and food versus 95 to 100 degrees and no wind down in Florida. Yeah. Just, do you still do you ever do like a whole day sesh or is it? Yeah, I'll take breaks. I'll usually like. Like I'll go out for ten to twelve hours straight, and I mean I'm dead by the time I get out of, off the water after those ten to twelve hours. But yeah, I, I still enjoy it. It's still an enjoyable time for me, like all the way through to the end. Nice. By the by the time it ends, I'm happy to be back on land, and it, I take my sweet time getting loaded up and everything. <laughs> but um, 
But yeah, like I, like I said, I don't, I don't really mind the heat all that much. That's good. That's good. Do you, do you miss the north weather at all, or are you a Florida boy at heart now? Oh, man. Um, I, I'm, I miss it up north. I miss the snow sometimes. Um, uh, I'll go up to visit in the winter, usually once or twice, for, uh, for like a snowboarding trip or something, and it's usually awesome. And then by the time uh, by the time I leave, I'm just like done with the snow and ready. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to have to have to shovel it or anything like that. Yeah, I hear that. Snow is great from Thanksgiving till Christmas, and that is it. Yeah, <laughs> that is the only time it's ever enjoyable. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, so what trails are you fishing down there, kayak wise? Uh, so I'm fishing the uh, Kayak Anglers of Florida Sunshine State Trail, um, and that's the the one kayak trail that I've really gotten into down here. Uh, it seems like there's there's been a lot of like conflicting dates uh, with other kayak trails, so I've really just bought into doing that. Um, and then I've also been fishing the uh, FLW BFLs as a co-angler this year. Uh, good buddy of mine finally convinced me to start doing those. And I mean, really, this year is the first year that I have dedicated the year to really getting into competitive fishing. Um, I've fished before December of this year. I, I think I fished. I had fished maybe three tournaments in my life. Um, and I'll tell you what, fishing the BFLs with some guys that know the Florida waters really well and, you know, just who have a lot of experience as fishermen, I've, I've been able to learn a lot from them and pick up a lot of things that have really helped me grow as a fisherman throughout the year. Um, and, I mean, it's really helped me become more confident, too, because you go out with, as a co-angler and you're kind of, doing your own thing but also trying to learn from the guy you're on the boat with and then you i go out on the kayak and i feel like i've got all these other tools in my arsenal that i would not have had otherwise yeah it's a great learning experience that's actually something i've been thinking about doing too so that's why i'm glad you brought it up because that was one thing i was going to ask you is you know why you were thinking why you were thinking of getting into that like i mean obviously like you mentioned it's great you learn a lot from a boater i mean obviously that's boater dependent but you know, you can learn a lot. You can walk away with a bunch of different information. Are you intending on taking that to a different level? Is this just a fun little thing for you to do? Or are you planning on someday down the road getting on that front deck? You know, it depends. So for me with my job during the school year, so September through up until May, I'm so busy that – I don't think I'll ever have the time to put the pre-fishing hours in that a lot of these uh, fishermen do, the guys who are on the front deck. I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to put the, the hours into pre-fish to really give myself a chance against some of these guys that have a day or two extra each weekend to go pre-fish this lake for the tournament that they have coming up. Um, if I ever found the opportunity where I had the time to do it, absolutely, I would love to. Uh, but I, I've really kind of been focusing on using the BFLs as a co-angler as a learning experience because you can't really control where the boaters going to take you. You just got to go there and fish. And so far, it's been awesome. I've learned something every single time I've gone out. Um, and I really try to focus on using what I learned in those BFLs to better myself in the kayak tournaments. I guess if I were going to get more intense into fishing, I would definitely go the kayak route over the boating route. Okay. So you're saying, like, if you want to go nationally, like, a, in a sense of mo making mo movements toward doing it for a living, you take the kayak route, not the boat route. I would, about. yeah. Okay. I understand that, yeah. Do you have other reasonings behind that but beyond just time management, why you choose a kayak over a boat? I think the kayak is so such an interesting way of fishing just because you've got to pick an area. And you can't go on a 60 mile round trip uh, day to really like, check out 20 different spots. It's you need to really put together a plan before you go and stick to it. Um, you need to have fished an area, know some spots, know when to get up and move, and know when to stay where you're at, um, which is something that, you know, if everybody knew how to do it, everybody would be doing it. It's, right. it's tough, but. Um, I think the fact that you need to be able to pick apart a smaller area and really know how to find the bigger fish in that small area is an interesting dynamic. Yeah, I, I'm completely agreeance with you. I mean, it's 
in a tournament, you're not going to launch somewhere, spend a couple hours and pick up and drive, you know, 10 miles. I mean, you might, but Some people do time it out. Right. I mean, yeah. I know, like you said, yeah, like you, you just mentioned it too, like people have done it, but like, when you talk about efficiency, that's not the most efficient game plan, right? right. I mean, the, ideally, you find an area, you find a couple miles, whether it's one area, whether it's 10 or 15, or whether it's a certain pattern that you're going to run for a certain stretch. I mean, that's ideally, that's what you want to get into. But it's it's so much easier in a boat to say, okay, turn on the motor, let's drive 20 miles down lake. Whereas a kayak, you got to paddle, pedal, whatever, back to the launch, load back up, drive. Yep load back out launch get there where it's just it's a lot more you know timing it's a lot more in the process where that's it's interesting taking the kayak route i mean it's the kayak route ideally for myself i would love to take that boat route i would be choosing mm-hmm. the boat but in the same sense definitely not straying away from the kayak because expenses wise it is much easier on your wallet that's right <laughs> yeah i mean and that's that's why i don't have a boat <laughs> Yeah, 100%. I mean, like, when you look at the boat, like, the boater side, obviously, there's pros and cons on both boater and kayak. Like, boater, you can win a lot more money. Mm. But kayak, way less expenses. So, it kind of, like, when you look at the ratios of cost, expenses to earnings, like, potential earnings, they, they kind of, kind of almost equal out. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get crazy, crazy money out of these kayak tournaments. And you get some good money. But, like, you're not going to see, at least not yet. I mean, to see a tournament, you're going to win 300 grand. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, the kayak the kayak world is growing still. You know, it's it's still relatively new. Um, you know, obviously, uh, uh, Bassmasters has their kayak division now, KBF, and uh, the Hobie series. Like, there's some, some big uh, trails that are popping up that are really starting to have some serious payouts, which is – you know, I think they're only going to get better and bigger as, as time goes on. Yeah. No, it's awesome to see it, for sure. And it's it's kind of cool because, like, you look at the boater side, right, and there's the different trails, and each angler can find their niche. It's kind of cool the same way with the kayaks. People are finding their niche. And I don't know if you, you can completely tell me I'm wrong. You could disagree here. But the way I look at it is, like, Hobie and, and Bass, I don't have a good gauge on yet because yeah. there haven't really been – I don't know there's been a couple of national ones. But I, I don't know how that is panning out just yet. I haven't heard much. But you look at, like, the Hobie series, and that's, like, that's for your super competitive angler that's willing to put down big money to try to win big money, yep. right? And I'm trying to go against the nation's best. Now, the national championship for KBF is pretty similar, but your numbers are way, way more for KBF. And someone who is more of a, I guess, someone who's trying to gauge their skill level versus some like, first you know, whomever, probably is going to take their chances at a KBF national event or regional event versus going to a Hobie. Yeah, that makes sense. oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, for KBF, too, there's so many op- so many more opportunities to get into a national championship where you know, you know at their national championship you're going to be fishing against some some very talented fishermen uh, mm-hmm. and women. And, um, you know, just having the opportunities to fish from anywhere in the country – you don't have to drive, you know, halfway across the, the country to get to a qualifying event. You can get one, to one in your own backyard. I mean, you could fish online, the online tournaments, and qualify, which uh, especially now I think has been great, uh, with just with everything that's been going on. Hundred percent. And I, I yeah, I, I think with KBF, there's just way more of an opportunity to get yourself to that national championship and get yourself in the mix of some big names. Um, but if you I think, I think, like you said, some of the top level competitors in kayak fishing are fishing those Hobie events, and uh, that's uh, it's it's just where there's gonna be a lot of talent coming from. Yeah, it's getting a lot of traction, which is super interesting to watch. And I'm bummed because they were supposed to come up here to Lake Erie on May 16th, and that got yeah. canceled due to all this. And that was the one I was gonna do this year, but I was like, well, all right. Have you ever done any uh, the national ones? Any national tournament at any trail? I I haven't. I plan on it whenever they come to Florida. Um, we'll see. Again, you know, like for me, it's work related. If yeah, I, I'm not afraid to you know go on a long drive if it's in the summer. Um, but if I'm going to spend the money to enter the tournament on hotel on gas, I want to make sure that I've got the time to pre-fish it, and I can't necessarily take the time off of work to. Uh, 
to give myself the opportunity to compete against some of these people. Oh, 100 percent, dude. You gotta, like we just said, we gotta weigh out the pros and cons and see if, it, at the end of the day, is it worth it? Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's, it's definitely, it's not something you can kind of just. I mean, I'm, people do it impulsively, but like, it's a, it's a big decision to go fish some of these big events, because like, like you like, mentioned, well, as soon as they, as soon as they come to Florida, I'll, I'll drive four hours on the weekend to go pre-fish and uh, for the couple of weeks leading up to the tournament. Uh, so, like, let's say they have a tournament uh, next year on Lake Toho. There's a big event on Lake Toho, which is about a three-hour drive for me. I'll I'll go up there three week weekends in a row leading up to the event, just because I, I'm free and uh, I fished it before, so I have a general idea of where I'll be able to find some fish, and I can kind of try to fine tune. Um, I think I think I'll still be putting myself at a disadvantage compared to some people that are be fishing it multiple days ahead of the tournament, but. I, for that experience, for being that close, I'd be kicking myself if I didn't get into it. Yeah, no, 100%. And it's and like you mentioned, too, like well, a very crucial part of the kayak industry. Like you mentioned, you are basing it around work. You have you have a job. Yeah. It is a lot harder to fish for a living in the kayak scene than it is at the boater scene. Mm-hmm. Like, like it goes back to the payouts. You can earn your right. I mean, these are some dang good anglers that you're going to beat in the kayak scene that could very well be beating these guys in the boats in the boater scene, but the payouts aren't as much. You know, you could definitely earn your way to with that win, but you're not going to get you know hundred grand for winning just a, one of the one of the national tournaments, right? Right. It's so it's a lot harder to go in and set out and say, hey, I'm going to. I mean, guys have done it. There's guys doing it right now. And it sucks that some I know like a good friend Mike Elsie had decided to go and fish for a living, fish professionally. And of course as COVID hit, as soon as he decides oh, to leave man. his job, obviously. But I mean thankfully there's been tournaments going on. But it's it's hard to make that decision to say, I'm gonna leave this steady income to go after these kayak tournaments because not one I mean you have to join a lot more tournaments. And it's a lot more pressure to be more successful because you need to constantly cash checks. Yeah. Not that it's not the same way for boaters, but at least you can cash out in a bigger event and you feel a little bit less pressure going into those next few events. Yeah. And I, I don't think you're getting, you know, I know there's a lot of boaters that struggle with sponsorship dollars. You know, not everybody's getting paid by their sponsors. A lot of guys are just getting, you know, discounts on products, for example, um, at the, even at the highest level. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, in the, in the kayak world, I think there's an even smaller chance of getting paid by sponsors as opposed to, you know, maybe getting free stuff or, you know, discounts and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it just be, it's becoming, I think that is growing though for the, I think more companies are realizing how, you know, the magnitude that kayak fishing brings. Absolutely. And I think what's, what's cool for anglers, like, like you and I, right. So we're, we're kayak anglers and you know, it's, it's a lot harder for a company to be like, Hey, Here's an eighty thousand dollar bass boat. Take it and use it for the season. It's a lot harder for companies to do that than a company with a kayak be like, "Hey, here's a two thousand dollar kayak. Go use it for the season." Yeah, you know, it, it's you, there's a lot more opportunities to make. What, what's the term I'm looking for? We're Try to erase that. certain costs, right? Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. So it's. I mean, it's very rare you're gonna see guys get you know get like sponsorship, say with the rants or something. There's guys that do. But it's it's a lot harder to see that versus, you know, like a guy trying to go out and get a sixty thousand dollar bass boat for free. Yeah, it's, I think I think long story short, I mean, if you're if you're really going to be starting to make a living kayak fishing, like you need to dedicate your life to it. You know, mm-hmm. and if, if again, just I think life in general make is going to make it a little bit harder. You know, if you've got family, work, whatever. Well, there's a lot of other things that can go on in life that are going to prevent you from making kayak fishing your profession. Yeah, and you put it. You said the one word that deter. I think is holding back a lot of people from not not even just the kayak, but in fishing in general professionally is what holding people back from going after it for a living. And it's family. It is so hard to have. I mean, I can't speak from experience, but I can tell you from what I've been told. Guys with wives, you know girls with husbands or whatever your scenario you have kids too. add kids in that situation it is tough Mm -hmm. 
because not only do they have lives to tend to, and you're always away, or you're always bringing them with you, or, I mean, the, the, the ideal scenario that I have heard of, and I, I had Alton Jones Jr. on here, and he was explaining how when he grew up, he didn't go to school, he was homeschooled, and he traveled with his dad, Alton Jones Sr., out of the tournaments, so he'd see the, get to experience everything, and right. then he was homeschooled along the way. Like, if you're going to do it, I mean, that's obviously, that's probably an ideal way to do it. Yeah. Like, that's still, that's a lot, especially growing up that way. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's a def- it's a huge risk. I mean, that's really what it goes down to. Yeah, if you imagine, have those factors, you, you're set up perfect. Yeah, can you imagine if you do that, and your kid doesn't like fishing? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, no, that would be that would be awful. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Like that's just at the, at the end of the day, like if that's what happens, like that's your situation. I mean, you you just can't do it. Like, if, like you got to walk away. Right. I mean, that's a hard decision too. It's even even harder decision to walk away. Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've heard of some amazing, amazing anglers, legends in the sport that not many guys have heard of that had to walk away because they found out they're having a kid or so on, family issues, and then they don't fish anymore because of it. It's, I don't know. We, we went on a weird tangent here, but like, I think this is actually pretty cool. But I love going down this little rabbit hole. But it's there's so many different variables in bass fishing. It's, it's, it's really cool to see. So. Yeah, I mean, my, the way I look at it is – you know, coming for me, uh, my family is is and always will be the most important thing to me. Um, providing for my family is going to be the second most important thing. So I'm going to make sure I've got a job that I know I'm making money at uh, so I can take care of everybody. And then I'm going to have some fun. Uh, I'm going to make sure my family's safe, taken care of, and I'm going to enjoy myself on the water. Uh, I love having competition in my life. I'm going to, I'm doing good. I'm not trying to make a million dollars fishing. I'm trying to do what I love and add a twist to it that might make me a few bucks at once every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, it's, I've had a blast fishing tournaments. And I want to do it. I would love to fish a tournament every single weekend. It's so much fun. Um, but, you know, then that's when you start taking away from family. So, yeah. No, oh, I, I totally understand you. And, but you make a good point there. You know, as long as you're competitive, right? You know, that competitive drives you. And I know it's just like competition before you even mention anything about money. Yeah. And I think that's so important because I think there are certain individuals in the sport that are trying to get into it for the money. And that's when you see guys fail. Yeah. Just because it's not passion driven. The guys that you see on top are the guys that, even if it wasn't, they couldn't win any money, they'd still be out on the water Absolutely. as much as possible. Yeah. Because because that's all they want to do is fish. They live for that. And that's and that's why they're on top. They're not on top because they were chasing money. They were they're on top because they've been chasing ten pounders for that last twenty years and they've learned how to find them. Yep. Yeah, one hundred percent. They've they they're and you can speak to this too because this is how I feel is learning is what really drives that, that learning is part of that passion, getting mm-hmm. better. Obviously, that next cast, you know, could be a giant. That next cast could be a, something crazy. You know, that next cast, you could throw in a frog and get a giant, giant blow up, something you've never seen before. It's just, it's, you don't know what's next. You don't know what's to come. And I think that's what's so, that's what drives a lot of people to keep fishing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, man. I, or especially if you lose a big one. And then it's like, oh, now I know I can get a big one. I got to go back and get it, try for it. And, yeah. There's, uh, there's so much about fishing that keep, will keep you coming back. It'll get you hooked and just, you know, every single time, oh, this didn't happen or this didn't happen or this did happen, and now I really want to go back and try for it again. Mm-hmm. Can you see me on your screen? You are frozen. I, you are frozen as well. Let, let, me, let me reconnect here, and then we'll, we'll reconnect. All right. All right. There's a little technical difficulty there. For some reason, camera froze. We couldn't see each other. It's kind of weird to talk to a black screen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where, where did we leave off? I'm trying to remember. Oh, man. I can't remember. <laughs> it was only 20 seconds ago, and I can't even remember what we were talking about. Oh. Anyways, we'll, we'll put that. It'll come back just at some point. But So what's what's your next tournament coming up? What's what's next for you? Oh, oh. next is, um, is going to be July 11th. Is the... Uh, EFL on the Heritage Chain. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one got rescheduled. It was supposed to be at the end of March and uh, got postponed with all the COVID stuff. So I got rescheduled for July 11th. And, uh, 
Yeah. That's the one I'm getting ready for next. There you go. Now, I, I know, do you think that's going to get rescheduled at all with this whole COVID explosion that's going on down in Florida? I don't think so. Um, I, I haven't heard any rumblings or anything. I don't see why they would reschedule it at this that's point. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, I hope to God they don't. I, but, you know, if they, as long as it gets rescheduled, if they do have to reschedule it, then, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. It's it's weird times because I know, like, they escalated the testings, and I don't know all the information, but it just seems like, I don't know. It's a weird time we're in. That's all I can say. Yeah. About yeah, I mean, I, I kind of stopped paying attention. I do what I'm supposed to do, you know, like, in, I live in Broward County, so uh, if you're going to go into any stores, then you have to have a mask on, like, or else you they kick you out. So, you know, like, wear my mask when I have to, you know. Wash my hands, do whatever. But I mean, I'm not worried about it. But you know, other people might be. So you got those are the ones you got to do all the extra stuff for. Yeah, just make sure you're just following guidelines yeah. and don't really have much to worry about as long as you're just being conscious of what you're doing. Yeah, that's pretty much what we've been doing in New York here. Yeah, I mean, everyone in New York's been wearing masks everywhere for months. So it was. That's the one thing I was asked, like, because I'm going to Florida Friday, like I told you, is, you know, are you ready for people not wearing masks? And I'm like, that's going to be kind of weird now to see someone without a mask. <laughs> so in the uh, in the entire state of New York, is it mandatory? Yeah, uh, you can't, you won't get served if you go to, like, food places or anything if you don't have a mask on. Okay. Yeah, so, like, we even got, like, FedEx drivers and everybody with masks, driving with masks on and stuff like that. It's... Yeah, so Florida, the I'm pretty sure Broward County is the only county in Florida where it's mandatory to be wearing a mask. Wow. That's pretty wild. I could be wrong, but bring a, bring a mask when you come down just in case. Oh, uh, yeah, we plan on it anyways because we're going to our grandparents, and that's the last yeah. last person we want to potentially risk in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not, the only people we're going to be coming in contact with is gas stations, and one day we're going on a tarpon guide trip, and that's it. Oh, that so we're... we're we're not too worried about it. I mean, it's one person, and our grandparents, my grandfather, and my uncle are coming with us on the guide trip. So, okay. if they're excited about it, we're not we're, we're not going to worry. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. so uh, we're pretty excited for that. Uh, have you ever tried dabbling with any tarpon down there? I haven't, man. It's, it's on my list of fish to get into. Uh, tarpon is probably way up there at the top. I, oh, silver king, so big and cool looking, and the, the way they jump, it's just. I, oh, yeah, I got to get one of those on my line. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I'll i tell you, like, I'm afraid of sharks. I'll say that. But the one fish that truly intimidates me is a, a big tarpon. Yeah. Just the way they fight. And I am so excited to try to get one on the line. Just because yeah. I, I love facing that kind of stuff. And, dude, oh, gosh. I mean, I'm, I'm like, that's all I've been thinking about. Like, usually, and I'm like you, where if I go fishing for anything else, all I can think about, what are the bass doing? Like yeah, that's all my mind thinks about. Even when I'm hunting, like up here, and I'll be up sitting in a tree stand. And I'll be like, "What's the deer? What's the what are the bass doing right now?" <laughs> and and it just like distracts me. But tarpon is the one thing for this whole week I have not really thought about bass whatsoever. I haven't thought about tarpon, so now it's just driving me crazy. So I got to be careful because I might not like bass anymore after. I you know what? Tarpon. That's what everybody always says to me too. They're like, as soon as you go, as soon as you catch a snook, you're never gonna want to bass fish again. Um, but I don't know. For me, with the bass fishing, it's more of learning how to catch the bass more so than, you know, catching the bass, I guess. Yeah. Uh, just finding out the different techniques and, the, I guess, the art to, to bass fishing more so than just, hey, I'm going to throw, you know, I'm going to throw live bait in the water. Like, yeah. And if I'm fishing with live bait and catch a big fish, that's fun. But there's a little something extra to using artificial bait and really tricking a fish into eating it and catching it that way yeah and i'll, I'll give him this i mean I, i've caught many snook uh when we go down and, and visited and fished down there these these fish might be more of a fight more of an experience to to catch yeah but i think bass are much more unique than many saltwater species because they are in so many different scenarios so many different locations habitats and all over, all over different regions, or even you could go from one lake and drive down the road to a different lake, and they can act completely different. And I think that's what 
we love so much about bass is because the way they behave compared like I mean, if you look at like walleye right for the most yeah. part walleye across the the regions where there they live they act pretty much the same right i mean you look at perch they act pretty much the same a bass is like that one species that is just weird and they're in some cases they're just so stupid that to the part where we it's so hard for us to figure them out yeah Right? So hey, it's you're like, going to be catching them like crazy one day, you go back to the same spot tomorrow and not get bit at all. Yeah, and they can completely move because yeah. either they're just, you know, they can be extremely smart, but they're just so unique in how they be, uh, they behave, and that's what just drives us to keep coming back and keep figuring them out. Because once you can, you can start and figure them out, like, different conditions over and over again, because that's just, like, that is the best feeling in the world is when everything just starts to click, and you can literally read them, and that's what's... That's what drives every bass angler, I think. I mean, that's, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I mean, I remember I was in, um, actually, the first my first tournament that I won was on Lake Kissimmee uh, uh, about a little over a month ago. And it was just a tough day. I had uh, spent the two weekends prior to that, uh, that tournament pre-fishing. I, I had three spots that I knew there were fish there. Uh, went to my first two. And uh, didn't get anything. I caught like one 14-inch fish, which luckily I ended up calling. But then got to my third spot and was kind of grinding and grinding until I was able to put together a pattern and kind of figure out what was going on. And basically, I was fishing a, a bed of hydrilla. And every time I was get bit, it was only when there was like little dollar pads on the surface. So finding that combination of hydro and dollar pads, that I, I kind of clicked for me, and there was a big, big patch of dollar pads. So I went and just kind of sat in that for about 15 minutes and filled my limit and called a couple fish in real fast. Wow. I see, it's stuff like that where you can key in on the small little details that can make a huge difference. Like exactly. you can go and fish these different these mats around the whole place and not know that because it has that you know the dollar pads on top that it would have fish. I mean, the way you can key in on that, and that's what's awesome. That's how you grow as an angler, and that's what's... Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I love hearing that. And that was huge. I mean, it's just like... And it's something you can use later on. It may not be hydro and dollar pads next time. It might be, you know, reeds and Kissimmee grass. It might be, you know, any other combination, but it's just something else for you to remember to look for next time you're out fishing, which, you know, it's another piece of the puzzle. It's the never-ending puzzle. Right. Yeah. One hundred percent, man. Well, dude, we're gonna we're gonna move on to this last segment I have here before we uh we we sign off tonight. But uh, I got two questions I like to ask everybody. But before we get into that, where can people follow along with your adventures? Um, Instagram is you know my favorite thing to use for posting my adventures. It's at Suvac Kayak Fishing. Uh, Suvac underscore Kayak underscore Fishing. Um. Yeah, that's the uh, best spot to uh, find what I'll, find out what I'm doing. <laughs> if you want to stalk him, you can go down in the description and find his stuff down there. But, yeah. All right, man. Yeah, I'll link that down below. And I've All been right. following you for a while, and I've been enjoying the uh, the, the long-haired kayak, Florida, <laughs> Florida kayak fishing experience. Yeah. <laughs> so I got I to ask, when did you start growing that up? Oh, this has been – so I, I grew my hair out and donated it my sophomore year in college which would have been I don't know, five years ago i think it's been about five years dang son that's crazy yeah i think that, I'll, I'll donate it again and then i'll probably be the last time i'm getting a little thin up top and uh might just go there you go it's uh it's great razor we'll see <laughs> <laughs> are you a, are you a let it flow kind of guy or are you the man bun kind of guy oh uh, it depends if i'm on a boat uh, I gotta go man bun, otherwise it like just gets in knots and it's like a huge pain to get out. Uh, but if I'm just out of my kayak where I know I'm not gonna be going seven miles an hour, uh, I'll just let it go. So I like leaving it down. All right, I dig it. I dig it. All right, man. I got two questions I gotta ask you before we we sign off here. All right. Uh, these are questions I like to ask everybody, so uh, they're pretty fun. So Great. my first question for you is uh, if you're you say you're gonna have dinner. You're gonna invite three people to sit down and have dinner with you. Oh man! Can, who would you invite, and why? Because you're gonna sit down. You're gonna pick their brain. They could be past, present. They don't have to be alive. They don't have to be fishing industry. Who would you invite? Man, 
I always have such a hard time with this question. I've been asking <laughs> times. I'm so bad at it. Um, well, that's the fun yeah. part. Is I always get messages afterwards saying, "Oh crap, I should have said this so and so." Yeah, um, three people, man. I go um, Wayne Gretzky. Yes. Yeah, you gotta have a sit down with him. Um, just you know, greatest hockey player of all time. Um, it'd be great to uh, pick his brain. But I, yeah, you know, I, I always like the psychology of things, man. Yeah. And, um figure out what was up with his mind while he was playing hockey, being the best ever. And, yeah. Um, man. I don't know, man. Two more? <laughs> Do you have, like, a childhood hero or something like that? Not really. Wayne, Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Are you I'll a Blue Jackets fan? Yeah, I'll probably say Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson? I'd oh. love to, I would love to sit down with him and just hear some of his stories. Yeah, can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, um, and um, probably Roland Martin. Just try to get some uh, some good information out of him. Okay, <laughs> get some good local legend info. Yeah, legendary fisherman, and you know, guy who knows what he's doing. And it's hear that. great to pick his brain and learn a little bit more about uh, fishing in general. I guess. Yeah, I like it. So, are you a Blue Jackets fan, then? If I am mind? a Blue Jackets fan. Okay. You know, I, I, grew, I grew up uh, without Columbus having a team, right, without Ohio having a team. So uh, the Washington Capitals were always my favorite team until Ohio got a team. And I, I became a, uh, a Blue Jackets fan when I was like 10 years old or something. Thank God you switched from the Capitals. That's all I got to say. Oh, I still love the Capitals. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a Penguins fan. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. I got three cups. So it's, I'll take that. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's always a funny debate because, dude, I literally live in Rochester, an hour from Buffalo. So people always ask, like, well, aren't you also you're a Sabres fan? And I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I played against Mario Lemieux's kid when I was, you know, like seven or eight years oh, old. Yeah. So his dad was coaching him then. So I was like, I was after that game, my dad was like, yeah. You, you, you pretty much told me, you're like, I'm not a Sabres fan anymore. I'm a Penguins fan now. <laughs> He's like, all right. But it's awkward because I'm also an Eagles fan. What? Yeah, yeah. So my <laughs> this is a story I love telling, but people always get so confused why. So obviously with Mario Lemieux, whatever, that's why I'm a Penguins fan. And then I saw – actually, another reason why I'm a Penguins fan, I, I saw Crosby playing while he was in the juniors. Okay. So it was just kids skating circles around people. And it, as a kid, I was so impressed watching him and all this. And – uh that's kind of kind of followed him through when we went to the Penguins. It kind of just worked out. But my dad was just always this uh, this bandwagon when it came to football. Like he's a Raiders fan, Colts fan. Now he's a Titans fan. I mean, he loves Mariota, so that's that's why. But okay. Um, but he liked the Eagles for a little bit when I was growing up. So I decided I'm not going to be a bandwagon. I'm sticking with the team. <laughs> so I got stuck with the Eagles. Not that it's a bad thing, but. It's hey, man, uh, it makes for awkward games. When you go to a Penguins game or an Eagles game, it makes for awkward scenarios, and they ask about the other sport. At least you're not a Browns fan, man. But, yes. And I will be till the day I die. But <laughs> oh, no. hey, they're, they're coming back. They're coming back. Oh, no. I don't know what would be worse. I think it would be better to be a Browns fan than a Bengals fan. I don't know. Right now, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Baker Mayfield's going to take us to the promised land, I think. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. I hope. So. I mean, I would love. I mean, I, I was, I will say, I was a Browns fan coming through the fall. I was rooting. I wasn't a fan. I was rooting for them. Okay. I wanted to see them come out of the slumps. That would have been cool. <laughs> Man, it's still a work in progress. Might get. Uh, we might make it to the playoffs this year. We'll see. Well, yeah. If if, yeah. if if we even have sports. Yeah. I mean, sheesh. But yeah. all right, dude. So last question for you before right. we. Hop off here is, is this just gonna be another. Know. Is this gonna be another one that puts me on the spot that I'm not gonna be able to answer? <laughs> sort of. Oh, great. It, it's super simple. It's just straightforward. Your favorite fishing memory. Ooh. All right. Um. So, my dad would. Uh, I forget how old I was when he started doing this, but he would. Uh, he would let me call in sick on my birthdays, and <laughs> we'd go steelhead fishing in the in uh, the Grand River. Every year on my birthday, uh, I, I was probably like uh, I don't know, nine or ten years old. Um, so 
but yeah, that, that was the best. I was just, I remember there was one time that I caught my went out, caught my first steelhead. Now he caught one. We went and got lunch and decided to go back out for another couple hours, and then I got my first steelhead. And uh, yeah, that's so that, on my birthday um, with my dad got to. Uh, that to get my first deal. That's probably my favorite. Memory. I like that. I'm assuming I'm gonna take it. You're either a fall or a winter birthday. Uh March. March. Oh, okay. So yeah, that makes sense too. Early spring. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say you're definitely not a summer birthday if that's what you're doing for yeah. <laughs> steelhead. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's awesome, dude. I like it. Yeah. Well, man, I just gotta say thank you for taking the time to come on. And uh, I know we had a little technical difficulty on my end here, but I appreciate you staying patient. For a little yeah, bit, man. It was uh, awesome being on the show with you. I had a great time. Heck yeah, man. You're always welcome. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming on. It was a blast, dude. Yeah, awesome. All right, Dan. We'll talk soon. All right. Sounds great. Bye. Bye. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed that podcast there with Jake. Again, with these podcasts, we go down all these tangents, and I love that part. Hope you guys enjoy that we go off in these tangents. Um, these podcasts are so relaxed, and it's for people to come back and, and talk about their, their roots the fishing, just different topics and fishing, whatever comes to mind when we're talking. That's what I love about it. I hope you guys enjoyed that with Jake talked about, you know, fishing in Florida, kayak fishing. Um, Jake talking about how he wants to get in the salt water a little bit, but he, he shares that same mindset as me. Is well, you know, you're fishing for anything else? You're always thinking, what are the bass doing? You know, I'm sure many of you guys listening are the same way. You're always constantly thinking about bass fishing. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, again. Um, back in the introduction, I told you guys to go enter that giveaway. Uh, go and accept the challenge over at the Angler app. If you guys want to get any serious angler apparel, um, go down to the link below. You can guys go to that link there and, and pick up any apparel that you might want. Um, any sort of purchase of apparel is hugely support, uh, supportive to the show and myself and the, the, the amazing folks that I have on. So thank you guys again for watching and listening, and we will see you guys next time.